What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Room World. Now, this sorting room thing that I wanted to try, wasn't sure if it was going to work, but we'll give it a go. You can see I've built two of the splitters now as well. Now, they're uh, pullers, uh, but they're through wall pullers, so that you can still keep the wall in play. Uh, and if they're destroyed, the wall still remains. Also, a, what do you call that, quarry? Small one, though, uh, not a large one. Uh, putting that down to try it out as well for colonists that have got nothing else to do. Which does happen on occasion. You do get idle colonists. Uh, normally I get them just cleaning or hauling, but I'd rather them than be mining for some resources at the moment. We have a decent amount of, what, eight, nearly 8k silver, 15k steel, 1100 wood, which obviously you don't get from a mine anyway. 1300 uranium. Now I would like to get that number up. Uh, no plasteel as it stands, which we definitely need because repairing the robots and leveling up you can see the uh, wall there is actually plasteel so i'm using it when i get it but the top wall the top brazier where my people stand behind is not that is steel um, and i want to get it all up to plasteel where i can not only because it protects my guys but also because it lasts longer so the idea of this puller here that I'm setting up now is for weapons and apparel only. So they will get pulled out of that long box you can see there and pushed into that room. That room then I'm hoping to have some sort of automated smelter. But if not manual it doesn't matter as long as they're segregated where they need to be. Then the room below it should be set to items manufactured things like that. So when they drop food, medicine... Uh, any drugs or beers and things like that that will go into that bottom one even down to resources as well if they drop metal steel things like that that will go into there is the plan anyway we'll have to wait and see if it works now it, it does uh, the, the the process works of pulling the goods and separating them the automatic smelting we haven't got the research yet to be doing stuff like that not at the speeds we need so instead it's better just to chuck down a trade beacon and sell it when you can so again the top one is for armor clothing and weapons the bottom one as i'm setting up now is for food manufacturing raw and items the corpses and everything will be going the opposite side to the right when i get that set up so corpses mechanoid corpses things like that will go to the right the goods will go to the left into here be split into these two rooms this room really just needs to go into our storage to be either used or sold at a later date. The top room for the clothing, armor, and weapons um, needs to be stored there to be recycled, destroyed, smelted, whatever it is that we wish to do in the future. I think for now, destroyed is probably, well, it's definitely the quickest way. Destroying uh, armor, weapons, etc. It takes three work. Recycling takes 25, so significantly longer. Now you can see actually the pulling here of the items. I just dragged the zone over to where all of those guns were and they were immediately picked up. You can see down at the bottom there's a few extra. So if I drag that over, you can see they're going to get immediately picked up. You can't go out of bounds, of course, so everything out of that white line, you can't use this process now the larger you make this area the more power the puller uses so be warned otherwise it'd be broken broken right but yeah so it, instead of the grid that we've got now using say 500 watts doubling it would not take a thousand it'd probably take two thousand it jumps quite quick but you can see there it pulled all of those guns in they then got separated and pushed into that top room and then there's some plaster seal and some components down there as well that's dropped from something or someone that have been pushed into that bottom room the room then to the left of it is still being dug out and built is going to be where i want to set up some automations with these items in the meantime though people are coming and fetching them manually as you can see And as a caveat to that, just because I know that it's not actually going to work in terms of recycling, I'm just going to extend the rooms, which is what you can see there. That's not going to be four rooms, it's going to be just two longer rooms. Quarry working well, but it is chucking out a load of stone chunks, which, to be honest, I'm not convinced that is a lot of uh, plasteel that I can recycle. I'm not sure at all, because I upgraded... Yeah, so I've upgraded that to steel. It's heavy, 
reinforced, um, which requires the hyperweave uh, cloth. Uh, I can't do it all the way around, but the steel one was cheaper than the plastic one was too expensive, so that's why I've done that. But that means that the plastic steel that was there before has been turn into buildings that I can put down again but I'd rather just dismantle them all and get the plastic back. We only have 18 at the minute and I want a lot more. We're going to need a lot more than that moving forward. I was hoping that the quarry was going to help but of course it's showing that we actually uh, are getting more stones than anything. 10 mech serums there you can see in storage. They are from legendary rewards. One of the legendary re rewards you can get gives you 50 uh, glitter world medicine five of those mech serums and I think 200 normal medicine which is really good so far I have not seen a resurrect mech serum uh, I would always like to have at least one of those in, in case one of the superheroes gets killed people like Pex, Joanne Ward Booker maybe Manum, uh, them sort of characters if they get killed the only solution I have for that is luckily, uh, and I don't know if you've done this, it sounds wrong, but you know, we've had so many else grow up as well, so that's just one of the other babies. But yeah, if they do die, I'll just put them in the freezer. Because if you put them in the freezer, you freeze them, then they don't go rotten. And then if you get a resurrect serum in the future, you can resurrect them as they are. If you allow them to rot, of course, that will cause you a lot of problems. So if any of your characters do die off, Put them in a freezer. The easiest way to do it, I've found, is build a sarcophagus in the freezer. Put them in it, and then it just keeps them frozen until you can resurrect them. Unless you never find one. And then, of course, they'll never be resurrected. But as it stands, um, that is the plan that I like to use anyway. And, of course, some of these characters, I want to continue them on in other series. So them being killed off would be very, very, uh, what can I say, annoying. So with this wonderful stock of steel slag, stones, uh, and maybe some mech slag, I'm not sure, but that's still the same anyway. We can automate this a little bit too. So this little room here will have an in-wall puller, as we've already seen set up. And then that is a furnace building that we're building. The idea is that we'll set it to pull the steel slag through the wall and place it in that room. The machine then will be able to pick up that steel slag and turn it into steel. And... Um, with that set up, that means that we'll, aut we'll be automating any steel slag that drops on the map to be turned into steel without a person being involved, unless they have to obviously fetch it and bring it into the storage. Of course, we can extend the storage to do it automatically, but out of bounds, for example, we're always going to have to rely on a colonist or a robot to do it for us. Not sure if I mentioned as well, you can see the, the recreation room has been upgraded quite nicely to snooker tables, so I really could do with upgrading them to something nicer than wood. There is the steel cube on... Steel cube? No. There is the golden mystery cube, which is on a golden shelf that everybody can view. Now, these are the statues that they keep building because they're obsessed with it. As long as they have the ability to go to this golden cube and look at it, they will not murder everyone. So that is why I've left it on the shelf there. It seems to work for me, though it also means that none of them can ever leave the map because they will go batshite crazy. Let me know if I'm supposed to have locked it in a room for one person only. I don't actually know, uh, if I'm honest. We keep moving forward with some of the research on it and they keep studying it and doing all that sort of stuff. That's fine. Nothing too exciting, other than a lot of different types of entities coming in to attack us, some of which are terrifying. There's no massive sort of game-changing playthrough that I'm seeing from the anomalies at the minute, but maybe I'm doing it wrong, so you will have to let me know on that one. Okay, so hopefully if I've set this up right now, it is built. You can see it's got its output there, which will go around the machine. Obviously, one square needs to be left so that it can the machine can output into a different stockpile. But all I want this to do is pick up slag chunks and steel chunks... Uh, I put them into any of those slots and boom, there it goes. Now you can see the machine immediately starts working and that very top square that we left is where it puts the steel. It can hold on to the equipment if you want it to, but I want it to output it. So as it's doing that, it picks up a steel slag chunk. 
it turns it into steel it then picks up another one and so on and so forth meanwhile the wall puller will continue to pull slag chunks from that entire stockpile if this stockpile covers the map and there is a steel chunk uh, a thousand blocks away it will still pull it remember though that the larger the stockpile it's pulling from the more power it will use so as long as you're okay for power you're okay to set up these automations which i love doing to be honest in RimWorld especially when you get the end game where you've got masses of people coming into a kill box and as they're dying uh, their corpses are being sent to be cremated their armor's being sent to be cremated or at least burnt uh, their weapons are taken off them and put into storage etc it's quite fun so there are some mechanoids causing us a bit of trouble at the minute they have a high shield which means we cannot use uh, mortars properly so I'm just going to send in my guys to finish off these final few buildings. Uh, but more specifically that last centipede as well. That will give us a win for the actual mechanoid cluster. But also it will give us a boost, mood boost for defeating them. Of course you have to defeat the buildings for that to count. So defeat their mortar and then two of their... I'm not sure what their machines are called. But they're the things that generate uh, nudes centipedes after i think sort of six days mm. and the last bit and there we go uh, we get the mood buff from it you saw that by the green faces above them the pod arrives which means we obviously get so i actually yeah i actually op asked for this to do some quests quests are good for getting certain items things like resurrect serums and uh, the weave and synth thread and stuff like that you get through quests now we do have a mod to build it though it is expensive um and buying it also but we did get some tech prints here to help us with research now there are quite a few of these that i'm not going to necessarily use because my idea for progression is from the plate armor into like marine or recon armor into the cataphract armor and if i need to go above that which i'm hoping i don't because the kill box should do the work for me um there is obviously godlike armors from the dark matter um, metals that you can make that we will get into definitely for the weapons but armor wise I am not sure yet we'll have to wait and see maybe I'll make one so we can see what it looks like uh, when we get to the end but we're nearly halfway now remember 47 wave number in nine days we did take a or I sorry I did take a gap where it gives you uh, double the amount of time to do certain upgrades or changes if I'm doing anything with these sort of automatic setup systems i like to just not have to worry about having half built things when we're getting raided so gaps like that give me more time but it shouldn't affect you guys because i can skip through all that crap unless something interesting happens exactly the same as the steel chunks i've set up a automatic masonry again leaving one gap open at the top the rest of it is a stockpile for it then a wall puller which will pull the stone uh, chunks only now, I don't care what stone... I want all of the stone chunks to be processed because I'll either use them or sell them and clear the map up. So as you can see, that's working. Pulls them through. That then turns them into their brick variant. As it says there, make any stone blocks. You can obviously signify to lock it down. but Now, at the minute, there's a bit of a loop going. So the droids are taking them out of there and putting them back again, which is a problem. So you need to make sure that when you set up the stockpile for both of these... Uh, that they match the one that they're pulling from so that the criticality is the same Wh whatever it is it needs to be the same otherwise uh, they will just continue to keep taking them and moving them taking them and moving them and that is means you're never going to get anything done because not only is that going to cause a bit of lag because they're in a s never ending loop it also means that they're not actually doing something useful like I don't know taking something to where it actually needs to be like that steel that we've got nearly 1700 steel that needs to go into storage there and yes, I'm building some of these because the roof keeps caving in. I don't necessarily think it needs to be roofed, but I want it to be. I'm back over on the left-hand side. We're automating the process. As you can see, I've added an extra little room down there at the bottom, and that is for the foods. So as the anything that's perishable gets taken into this chamber I've just extended, they will automatically go into that room. And that pillar in there is a utility pillar, which is a freezer one. So that room is negative 19 degrees so anything frozen or perishable will go into there and it means that it will be stored there and then until somebody has a chance to come and fetch it then they can take it to our actual freezer 
where it can be stored until sold. The room above that then is just a room that I don't think I actually ever use for anything. It's just a, a, a joining room that I, I built as part of it. I could put some machines in there maybe if we need to, but there's no... There's no actual reason to build stuff for the sake of it. You will notice the craft room, the crafting room there to the right of that screen is a lot emptier than it was before because I'm about to rip everything out and rebuild it in a way that is hopefully automated. Farms there looking nice. You can see all of them are growing well. Two um, mines there going as well. They are from the Minecraft mod. Basically, you set what you want resource-wise and they go into that mine and fetch it. It's a little bit slow, but it's guaranteed, so... It's always a good option. Um, you can see I've got what looks like two potato fields. Uh, yeah, two potato fields, a healing root field, a sweet corn or a corn field, and then two devil strand fields. The devil strand is for building the odd thing out of fabric. Uh, the rest of it will be sold for a decent profit. You can do psychoid stuff as well, uh, cyclite or the psychic tea stuff, and sell that for a really high profit. But... I don't like a lot of people use that as a easy easy silver making thing and I don't really like that idea also it's not wise to get lots of silver if you're not needing it for stuff because all it does is make the waves harder and they're all they're all kinds of difficult already in their own ways and they're certainly gonna get harder we're not even halfway yet and we've had a couple of issues Okay, so for the automations, we're going to jump over now to the craft room where I've set it up. These are the portable recipe databases. You need to put them next to your crafting tables. Then you can see it gives you the option to learn. When you click learn, it will use the amount of work that it takes to make that item and learn it into that database. Once it's in there, it remains in there permanently and then you can move it around. All of the assemblers that you can build, both the low-level ones, the high-end ones, and the very stupidly fast ones, all require these to work. You can't get the recipes to the assemblers without these databases. So you put them down and you ask them to learn. And the reason I've got three down is because I've got three different plans and now four uh, of what I want to learn. Now, there is a radius they work in and you can see it based on the circle, similar to that of the uh, column that I just put up. So you put your databases down. Now, if you wanted to learn a lot like I am from this advanced fabrication bench, expect to wait a while for them to learn it. To learn the recipe onto the database it is literally using the amount of work it takes to craft the item. So these end game sort of uh, armors, like, like I'm learning now a lot, marine, uh, marine armor and the recon armor, it's gonna take like 1500 work to learn it. So it will take a while and you will need to be aware of that. But once it's learned, it is learned, and then you just move them around. Now, you will need to use the B button or the re uh, reinstall button. To do that, if you uh, try and just dismantle it and move it that way, it will delete everything off it. So you can see there are all the options, and you can click any of those squares where it says learn to learn that recipe. Of course, you don't need to learn them all. I'm going to have one that's got the bionics on it. I'm going to have one that's got the armors on it, one that's got the fabrics on it so that the different machines are doing different things. If you have one machine doing everything, of course the assembler itself that's doing all of that work will be backed up. There are different tiers of assembler as well. The first one you get is just the assembler. The one after that is the self-learning assembler, which is brilliant and definitely the, the, the best one you want to use. Basically, every time it crafts something specific, it increases its speed on the item up to 250% I believe it caps at so it'll be two and a half times faster than uh, being a colonist at level 20 now there is a lot of research both for animatronics which is done outside of the research tab um, but also for the industrial which is all this automation stuff that we're doing so as I wait for those items to be taught to the databases we can look at what we're going to do next after 10 days of waiting, we now have wave 47 coming in. 130 people killed. That's the standard. You will see if I come into these waves breaking into the kill box. Uh, any of the deaths beforehand will have been done by the mortars. Still six. Uh, and they are already running away. So 
yeah, that didn't go too well for him. There is two groups, though, so we'll wait for the second group to come in as well. And here they come. So as the as they are dying, uh, obviously their corpses are remaining. We haven't set up that thing that I said yet on the right-hand side for that automation of the corpses. Um, but their items that they're dropping should be being processed. And if you look in the top corner there, you can see the odd bow and spear and helmet and a bit of beer, wood, whatever it is that they're carrying, is all being processed. Now the items, that, sorry, the, the machines that are doing this are very delicate, so that's why I've put them right at the very start uh, of the kill box, closest to my guys. But you can see all of the equipment is being pushed into that top room and all of the goodies, resources, items manufactured are being pushed into the bottom room, so it is working. Um, it's not as dramatic because the numbers are still quite small. We are going to be pushing five, six, seven hundred people in a wave at any one time in the future. But for now, it's quite calm. The rooms are probably excessively large for this sort of wave. They are getting pretty close, though. But as yet, I haven't fixed the floor. You can see I've still got the wide open moats and if you actually look at them when they're inside the moat in the dark brown area they move at normal speed which is no good which is why you must break them up into single tiles and you'll be okay luckily we managed to win that fight there and you can see it's just loading now over to i took the auto arco tech artifacts that's hard to say but to be honest they're a bit pants every time i get them they're a bit pants i'm not sure if this is supposed to be a good one you can get from it but i haven't had one yet it's always pulses animal pulses or some other um happy pulse thing which doesn't really appeal to me i'd rather have uh, hard cash or resources personally Okay, so with the assemblers, once you've got the databases next to the assemblers, you can then go into the assembler, add bill as normal, and do all of your normal settings. They will need the resources near them in order to work. So the one on the left is working, the one on the right we are setting up. So I'm using shelves for now. Further on in the research, there are some IO ports which are brokenly good and automatically transfer items around. So, But for now, you need to pay attention. So you click on the assembler, you look at what bill you are building, or wanting to craft you then know what resources you require and then all you have to do is make sure that them resources are within one tile of the assembler itself if they are the assembler will grab those resources and make the item that you are requesting if you set until x or something like that it will of course do that as well that sky sky steel that's on there is definitely not supposed to be on there i know for a fact we don't need sky steel to make anything plus steel makes more sense now, one mod that you will definitely need to make this a lot easier and better for you is the mod that allows you to set a stack amount. Now, I don't think I had it at this time in the game, but it is in the mod description, the mod pack that I have created for this playthrough. And it just means that on the shelf, instead of having that 624 gold there on that left hand side, if your items only need 10 to make, then you have 10 items on the shelf at any one time. There's no point having more than that because it's not going to make more than one at a time. So I like to do it that way. That also means that if you need the resources elsewhere, they're not all stored on the wrong shelf. These machines will continue to go forever. Down in the bottom, you can see it's actually an adaptive assembler because I had the resources to do so. Every time it crafts something, it increases the speed in which it can make that item up to, I think it's, it's either 250 or 220%, which is significant. You can see there in that chest, although it don't look like much, in that chest is what looks like about 15,000 steel. So clearly that's required to make whatever it is there. And I think that's making components and advanced components maybe in that one. You can see it's got three data banks worth of recipes that it can do. Now, yes, there are ways to cheese the crap out of these and break the game. I refuse to use them personally. But an example is the mines where you could just tell it to mine and plaster seal. Um, you can, of course, put the database on the mine, learn that recipe of mining plaster seal, put it in this adaptive thing, and then it will just throw out plaster seal like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I have done it before, I'm not going to lie, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing that now. I'm using them for the crafting side of it, both to speed it up, to increase the quality as well, because over time it increases the quality of the items it makes. 
um, and also to give my guys a break because they are very busy doing other things and if you just leave them doing crafting like this especially keeping things like components up to speed um, you will find they will be constantly busy for an example I think in the last episode we had like 4,000 components standard we're already down to 1100 so we've used somewhere in the region of 3,000 components uh, in the last couple of episodes which granted is probably a uh, looking at the screen it's probably about four hours five hours worth of gameplay but still so what i'm doing now is because both of these need steel all i'm doing is moving them close to each other putting that chest in between them both putting the steel back in that chest and they can both use the same shelf it makes sense if instead of having a shelf with 10 items on it if both of them need it then just put it all together Again, this will be a lot better in the future when we have the automated wireless I.O. ports. But until then, shelves work fine. And the chest, the steel chest, holds 32 stacks of anything, which is huge. I mean, that's 32,000 steel because uh, steel stacks to 1,000 in this mod set. But with that basic automation set up for the crafting, we can start wiping out some of these items now. The adaptive assemblers, or all of the assemblers, in fact, all of the machines that are in the industrial mods, uh, they don't require the benches to speed them up. So then benches there at the back of the floor, you can scrap them. They are not required. We are at time now, though, so I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.